Hi guys, welcome back to the Digital Bunch. Today we're back with another AI video for you and this time we're going to be doing some more stuff in Stable Diffusion, showing you how to do people in motion blur, editing water and editing different elements of your image so that you can create the best quality with the minimum time and effort. Let us walk you through a few tips that we find really useful in our production and let us know what you think in the comments below. The first tip that we're going to share with you is going to use this image as an example and we'll show you how you can use Stable Diffusion to enhance it. This image was done in 3ds Max and rendered in Corona. We're going to try and improve the look of the water and the waves and make this beach here look more realistic. This is particularly useful when it takes longer to achieve a specific effect in 3D or in Photoshop or if you're not really sure how to do it and you need to move more quickly. Nobody wants to spend a whole day refining the beach waves and you can definitely fix it using Stable Diffusion. So what you want to do is select the part that you want to improve and type in your prompt. For this we'll use super realistic beach waves from the top and we'll select the model for this task. Um, we can use Photon for this specific example. Of course you can also check out the original Stable Diffusion model for this and it can actually work really well because it's trained on a lot of diverse data. To download different models you can check out also this website here. So here's what we get as a result. You can see that this in general looks more realistic and really didn't require a lot of effort. We have the waves, the shore looks more natural and you can tell that the sand is wet when it's closer to the water. So this model really seems to understand what a beach would look like from a top view. You can experiment with the results and check what works better using different iterations. You can also experiment with the noise strength and see what that gives you. Now let's move on to improving the waves generated by this motorboat here. We'll first select the whole area that we want to improve and by now you know the gist. We'll type in the prompt, um, in our case it could be something like wave tail from the moving yacht and let's add big waves to the negative prompt just because we don't want it to be like over the top. Well, well, you know, like, it's fine, I guess. I mean, like, for the amount of effort this took, it's honestly impressive and, like, much better than what we'd achieve in, like, 3D. And also, you know, bear in mind that this is something that we can tweak in Photoshop and um, adjust certain things. I think it's definitely much faster than looking for images to use for photo bashing. We got an effect with more depth and we have some shadow here, especially if we compare it to the results that we have achieved in 3D above. So it is definitely an improvement. So you probably have already seen our video in which we show you how to improve a 3D model that is rendered in your image and enhance it using AI. But this time we're going to look at a very specific case in which the person is actually in movement and so we need to apply a motion blur effect to it. Now motion blur can be tricky because we do want it to look realistic and um, if you do it manually using Photoshop or if you even render it um, with a motion blur effect, it's not really the same effect that you would get um, if you took a photo of it. So it doesn't really look realistic. Now, AI has got a very extensive base of images that have the motion blur effect applied. And we believe that it actually makes it look more realistic. So stay tuned and take a look at this new trick. Another tip we're going to share today is how to apply motion blur on rendered 3D people. There are of course multiple ways that you could do this, but today we're going to show you how Stable Diffusion can do a relatively quick and good job, especially that there are some issues with doing this manually in Photoshop. A common issue that can happen with Photoshop is that you blur evenly the entire person. This does not look realistic and in reality, the parts of the body that are really moving faster should be blurred more, so the legs and the arms will for sure be more smudged than the back and the head. This is actually a great example of how not to do motion blur in Photoshop. On top of this, in this specific example, the smudges go in different directions, whereas actual motion blur should go in the direction the object is moving. So yeah, please don't do this. 
Okay, so here we're gonna need to write our prompt. In this case, we'll write super realistic Arabic lady walking in motion blur, and we select the person we want to improve. We adjust all the parameters and we select the model. In our case, realistic vision will work the best with people. And we hit generate. And here's what we generated. Some of the parts are pretty good. We have a typical AI hallucination where there's an extra limb here, nothing too drastic. You can of course regenerate this or improve certain parts of it. You can also use a bit of Photoshop to achieve the effect you're looking for. We can generate this again and every time we'll get a slightly different result. It's worth experimenting with um, for a while and looking at the differences that you get and just checking what feels right for you. If you'd like to experiment further, you can change the denoising strength. We'll move it up to 0.35. We'll generate this and see what happens. Basically, every time you increase the denoising strength, the generated image is further from the original references that we're giving to stable diffusion. If you enter 0.1, it won't change the image enough, and if you add 1, you will get the weirdest hallucinations that will make it completely useless. Okay, so this is a closer result to what we were expecting. This uh, 0.3 value worked much better and gave the model more freedom to tweak things according to the prompt. So it was definitely worth giving it a try. Um, you can see that this part here is not really blurred, but the parts that could be moving are still blurred. So this is a much more realistic effect. And AI is trained on photos, so it understands which body parts are usually blurred, which ones are not, and it will apply those learnings here. The reason why we keep saying that stable diffusion will not replace artists is because it actually needs a base from which it can generate an image. If you give it nothing, it will just kind of hallucinate something, but it's not going to be really in line with what you want to achieve as a result. And so creating something as a sketch in 3D or using any other technique that you're familiar with is actually going to help you um, to build that base and you can then use AI to enhance it, not to let it create something from scratch. This is not all you can do in stable diffusion. What we sometimes use it for is to swap out a backplate or a landscape in the background because we just don't want to spend too much time modeling the buildings in the background and rendering that or maybe sometimes it's just time consuming to find the perfect backplate using um, stock imagery. Um, AI really helps us to generate something that is exactly how we want it based on like a really rough sketch that we give it. We'll show you an example and we'll try to add an extra pool into this image. So this is just a general illustration of this feature of stable diffusion and we're not trying to create a masterpiece here. This is just literally to give you some ideas that you can apply in your work. By using the inpaint sketch feature, you can draw a rough outline of the pool in the right color. Add some shadows where you need them. Like remember that stable diffusion is really going to rely on the shape that you draw here. Um, so the settings look pretty fine. We type in the prompt. In our case, we want to generate super realistic water in the pool. And we're doing really like a half-assed job here to show you how effortlessly you can do this. Um, and even with like a poor first result, you can improve this by doing next iterations. So you can just pick the best version of the four images that are generated and proceed with this to the next step. Now we're going to move into the inpaint tab. We're going to be improving the AI generated version. Here you can select your pool again and add a new prompt. This time we can ask for the pool to have small waves to make it more um, realistic. And at this point, I think it's worth moving um, it to Photoshop to crop the image and be able to squeeze a little bit more quality from it. Mm, at this stage, we can also add some basic reflections, maybe something that looks like waves, uh, maybe even an outline of the pool, just to see how stable diffusion would interpret this. And we can now show you what we could achieve with a few more iterations or improving some details and generating new versions. And you can obviously see how half-ass of a job this is, right? But 
it's really just to show you that in an emergency situation, like when you just want to literally sketch something on your image, you can do that and just rely on AI and prompts to kind of figure out and, and like kind of fill in those gaps for you. So you can see that with the minimum effort that we actually put into this, um, Stable Diffusion stuck to the shape of the pool pretty well and it didn't change it. Uh, just made it feel and look as realistic as it could within the constraints that it got. These are obviously things that you can do in 3D or in Photoshop by yourself, but they usually take way more time. And what we're here to do is to show you how you can leverage AI to get your work done faster and more efficiently. So this is an extra tip for you if you'd like to relatively quickly prepare a backplate for your image and, you know, finding the right background for in the right lighting and the right perspective um, sometimes can be time consuming. So um let's say we'd like to see a cityscape far away in the background we can paste like any city into this image just to kind of give it like a rough sketch of what we'd like to see and today stable diffusion will help us make it look more realistic so we want to work in really broad strokes at this stage so we'll add some aerial perspective add a reflection to show stable diffusion that we want the light to come from this side um, in a really like you know sketchy way We will type in our prompt describing what we'd like Stable Diffusion to create. And here you go. This is one of the variants that Stable Diffusion generated. It's definitely looking more realistic um, than our super rough sketch. You can check out the, the other variants and you can see that in some cases the model didn't even really catch the direction of the light or in some cases, you know, it did a bigger or a smaller city. Um, but, you know, it's all a matter of like experimenting with this. Um, we also added the fog in the prompt and to see kind of what that gives us. And um, this one is kind of cool. But again, it's all about experimenting with the, the tool and learning how to just like communicate with the model to, to see kind of what you can push it to do. This brings us to the end of our tutorial for today. We really hope that you're going to be able to apply this in your day to day work. And we look forward to hearing from you in the comments section. It really gives us a lot of joy when we see you guys improving your skills every day. So please let us know what you think about it and see you next time.